In today's episode, I'm gonna give you a two-step process to make more money as a copywriter, guaranteed. Now, most writers I know, even those who have been doing this a few years, they're not making the rates that they want to make, but most of them only have a vague understanding of why. So in today's episode, I'm really gonna help you discover why it is that you're not making the rates that you want and how to fix certain aspects of your business so that you can make the rates you wanna make as a copywriter. So let's dive straight in. Step number one, you need to diagnose why it is that you're not making the rate you wanna make. And before we get into this, the first thing you need to understand is that there are hundreds and thousands of writers out there commanding phenomenally high rates, making a lot of money, writing content, writing copywriting, uh, the market is there, the demand is there. I have multiple clients who want more work from me at the rates that I charge than I can even keep up with. So the demand is there, the need is there. The question is, can you get in front of these clients, in front of these types of businesses, and then can you deliver the quality of work that is going to make them come back to you time and time again for your writing? There's only three possible reasons that you aren't making the rates you wanna make as a copywriter or content writer. The first is the most common, and it's simply that you aren't pitching the right clients. The vast majority of businesses cannot afford to pay at extremely high rates for copy or content. So if you want to be operating in that sphere with clients who can pay the rates you want, you know, you're needing to target probably 10% or less of total businesses. Uh, so you need to go specifically after the types of businesses that can afford to pay these rates. And we'll talk about how to do that, how to figure out if this is your problem later in this video. The second reason you may not be getting the rates you want is simply that your quality of work is not high enough. One of the realities of going after top 10% clients who have the budget is that they are evaluating multiple different writers and looking for a specific threshold of quality. And a lot of writers, even writers who have been doing this for several years, just aren't up to snuff. They simply aren't producing the quality of content needed to get these really high level gigs. And if that's the issue that's holding you back, I'm gonna show you how to identify that and how to solve that in this video as well. Reason number three, this is the least common. Um, very few of you watching this are gonna be held back by this specific reason. But for those few of you, who this is applicable for, I will say that there are potentially some scenarios where your quality has finally hit the mark, you are getting in front of the right clients, but the issue is that you don't have the quality of work needed in your portfolio. You haven't done enough lookalike projects that you can close the clients who are ready to pay the higher rate. This is a very niche case. We'll talk about the exact scenario that you should be seeing in your pitching if this applies to you. Uh, and with that in mind, let's dive into how to diagnose this problem um, and fix it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through a sequence of questions that will help you identify which one of these three problems is holding you back from making the rates that you wanna make as a copywriter. So the first question is, can you consistently land small initial projects at your desired rate. So what I mean here is, you know, maybe you don't have a big retainer client paying you the rate you want month in, month out, but can you at least land a small, maybe one or two page, one or two blog post project at the rate you want, you know, where you're getting the rate you want on a per word or per page or per day, whatever the, you know, whatever the metric is that you use to evaluate your rates, can you get that rate at all? Are you getting that on any project? And can you do that consistently? So if the answer is yes, if you are landing any gigs of any size at the rate you want, then the clients you're pitching are not the problem. So the second question then becomes, are they rehiring you for more work? The reality is that if you get hired by a company that can afford to pay a higher rate initially, if you do good work for them, then nine times out of 10, they're gonna be looking to rehire you. Finding high quality writers, even today, is still a challenge for a lot of businesses. So if your work is up to snuff, they are going to be rehiring you. If on the other hand, you're finding that you can land the initial gig, but then you're not getting rehired. They aren't coming to you repeatedly for more and more work. Maybe every time you land a dream client or a situation that you feel like is gonna be a long-term client, they bounce out pretty quickly. What that should tell you is that your quality of work 
probably isn't up to snuff. Your ability to close and sell has outpaced your ability to deliver top quality work. The rates that you're charging are overshot compared to your, the quality of your work. So what that tells you is you need to very systematically focus on increasing the quality of your work, and we'll talk about how to do that at the end of the video. So let's say you answer no to that first question. You rarely, if ever, can land any sort of gig of any size at the rate you want. If you answered no to that, then that creates a new question we need to answer, which is where are people falling off in your lead conversation? Are they falling off after you share a price, after you quote a price or a range to them, or are they falling off after you send them samples? Now, if they leave after you share the price, and this is usually what people encounter, this is the more common issue is that you'll be having a lead conversation, you pitch them the rate you want, and they just drop off or they make some excuse and leave, whatever. You know, that's the, you can sort of tell that that's the point where the conversation degrades. If that's what you're experiencing, then you're just not pitching the right clients. The clients that you're talking to can't afford the rates you want. And that means you need to be pitching the types of clients who can't afford that. So if that's what you've been seeing a lot in your lead conversations, you know, uh, you're getting in front of people, the conversation seems to be going well, and then you bring up price and boom, they're gone. That means you need to be pitching different clients. That's what's holding you back is you're not going after the businesses that can afford the rates you want. Now on the flip side, um, if you're in a situation where you're talking with them, they seem to be excited, the conversation's going great, you mentioned the budget, they're good to go, and then they ask for samples or they ask for some examples of similar work you've done to what they're asking for, um, and you either don't have anything very similar or you send them something and then they drop off, what that means is, you probably don't have the portfolio or the type of proof of work that is going to support the higher rate that you're charging. Clients with lower budgets very rarely put a whole lot of stock in your portfolio. It's one of the reasons when I'm teaching new freelancers that I don't make a big deal about them needing some big excessive portfolio because ultimately we're just looking to get them experience and practice. Um, but if you're at the point where you're charging a very competitive or high-end rate in the market, you really need to be able to show that you've done work similar to this level with a similar type of business. You often don't need to show any specific data. You just need to be able to show that you've worked on a similar project before and in a way where the client can look at the copy or the content that you've written and judge for themselves whether it's what they're looking for. So that covers the three potential issues that are holding you back from reaching the rates that you want. If you're able to land the initial gig, but nothing more, it's probably a quality issue. And if the sales conversation is going well, but then people are dropping off when you bring up a sample or send them your most relevant examples, it means you really need better specific portfolio pieces to aid in landing these higher paid projects. So if you're having any of these three problems, what do you do about it? Number two, you fix the problem and we're gonna spend the last few minutes of this video touching on how to solve each one of those problems. So first and foremost, if you discover, hey, my problem is a quality problem. I need to improve the quality, uh, the level of my work. What I like to do is reverse engineer. So I go look up the type of work that people are paying for, you know, the type of work being produced by the top paid writers you know, in my industry, and I go look at what they're doing and compare it, reverse engineer it, compare and contrast it against my own work. I look at, hey, what, you know, what are they doing that I'm not doing? What aspects of their writing are better than mine? Um, and then I try to emulate that. I try to uh, specifically practice on doing types of content or types of copywriting that uh, match what they're doing. You can do this by looking at you know, work that you know is from certain freelancers, um, or you can just look at the businesses that are making the most money in your industry and look at the copy and content that they're using in their own marketing and funnels, because if they're making a lot of money through it, it's probably performing well for them. And regardless, you know, they paid someone to create that content for them. So, you know, if they're, if they're willing to pay for that, if you can do a similar level, someone's gonna be looking to pay you for the same stuff. Now, this is not gonna be an instant process. You don't just snap your fingers, spend a few seconds and suddenly increase mastery. Increasing mastery is a very intentional and time consuming process. It may not even be something that you can do yourself. You might need to work with editors or other writers or coaches who can help you identify 
things that you're just not seeing. You know, especially if you've been doing this for several years, you've probably seen a lot of great examples. If there's something that you're missing, it might not be something you can identify yourself. So do what you need to do to bring in the resources or expertise that you need to improve your work and increase your mastery. Now, moving on to the next problem, if you find that you just aren't pitching the right clients, you know, everyone you're pitching uh, leaves when you bring up price, you need to pitch more successful businesses. You need to pitch bigger businesses. You need to pitch more influential players in your space. One of the things that a lot of writers come into the industry with is this fear of going after the successful people in their space. They think, you know, hey, I'm new, so I need to just work with new and equally inexperienced business owners. And while I don't have any issues with that at the beginning, because your work is gonna be pretty rough at the beginning, and that makes sense, but you know, once you've got some traction, once you're getting to the point where you reasonably should be increasing your rates and demanding higher pay, you know, you have some experience, you know what you're doing, you have a pretty good product you can deliver, then you need to be going after the winners. Um, it's really that simple. You know, the, the people who are successful, the people who are making money, you know, they have budget to spend on solving problems and improving things in their business that they don't have the time or prioritization to do themselves. You know, even if there's someone who achieved their initial success through writing everything themselves, at a certain scale, they can no longer do that effectively and they need to start bringing people in. And while some of them will do that through full-time hires, there's a massive market for freelancers because everyone starts with freelancers and businesses that like to pivot and be nimble and evolve. You know, it doesn't make sense for them to be relying on long-term hires that get entrenched in certain ways of doing things. They're often looking to utilize freelancers to come in and tackle specific needs for their business. So the market is there. You just have to go get in front of the ones who are actually making the money and have the budget to spend on bringing in writers. One of the simplest ways to do this is to look up any writer you know making the rates that you wanna make, particularly in your space, and go pitch every single client they've worked for. So look up their portfolios and go pitch all the brands that they've worked with because the chances are that they need more writers than they have now. You know, if they're growing, if they're the types of growing brands that can, you know, afford to pay top dollar for writers, they're often gonna to continue to need more and more writing um, more than any specific writer is gonna be able to handle, and you know that they're willing to pay you know, top rates for that work. And finally, if you're one of the handful of people who's in that position where you know, your work has sort of just hit a new quality threshold, but you're struggling to close clients because you don't have, you, know, you can't really show that quality in your portfolio yet, then what you need to do is just go find clients who are gonna underpay you for a project or two, uh, but will publish the work, will have the, the work available in a way that can be shared with other clients. Go do it for them at a discount, get the portfolio piece, and then use that to close people at the rate you want. You know, it, it's really pretty simple. You, you need the portfolio piece, you need that lookalike. So if you need to take a bit less money up front to go get that piece so you can close the rates you really want, do it, you know, it's, it's a one-time thing. So I hope that was helpful. Those are the only three reasons that you aren't making the money you wanna make as a copywriter. So if you are looking to make more as a copywriter moving forward, then you either need to be, you know, pitching clients who have a bigger budget, increasing the quality of your work, or just finding, you know, one or two really good portfolio pieces to demonstrate the quality of work that you already bring to the table. Hope that was helpful, and I'll catch you in the next episode.